Hi, Abby Johnson here, uh, former Planned Parenthood director, now pro-life advocate. And, I, you know, if you have seen anything on the internet in the past week, you've probably seen the video from Bill Nye, the science guy, telling pro-lifers why we just need to back off and let women have abortions and stop telling them what to do. Well, I wanted to just go through some of the things that Bill said because he comes off as appearing to be scientific, but many of the things that he mentioned were actually completely unscientific. And so I thought that maybe in this area, since Bill is not an expert on women's reproductive health or uh, certainly not an expert in fertility care, that maybe I would help clear up some misconceptions that he has since I am actually trained as a fertility care instructor. So with that said, I took I took some notes here. So I wanted to make sure that I, I was able to go through all of his profound scientific wisdom with us. Bill said that, you know, what what are you going to do? There's, you know, m so many fertilized eggs uh, that's in a woman's body during her lifetime. And, you know, what are you going to do? Put them in prison, you know, if they naturally pass these fertilized eggs in their menstrual cycles or, or through a miscarriage? No, sir. Uh, we're actually not interested in imprisoning women at all. And we're not talking about miscarriage at all. We pro-lifers are talking about abortion. So I just want to make that clear for you. We are talking about a woman who walks into an abortion facility who says to someone, I want to electively have you suction or scrape my human being, my unborn human being, off of my uterine wall in order to take its life. That's what we're talking about, Bill. We're not talking about the unfortunate loss of miscarriage, and we're not talking about the newly conceived human beings that sometimes will pass naturally through a woman's menstrual cycle. We are talking about elective abortion, not spontaneous abortion. Uh, you know, I, I want to explain something to you, Bill, maybe to help you out. We have what's called a continuum of a lifespan. And any break in that continuum, if I break, intentionally break the continuum of a lifespan from conception until death, that would be me then taking that life, breaking that continuum. And that is what we are fighting against because we are not just simply pro-baby, Bill. We are pro-life from conception until natural death. You said that pro-lifers literally don't know what we are talking about when we are talking about this issue. Well, I don't know where you got your degree as an ob -GYN. I'm not sure where you became certified as a fertility care instructor. Uh, I don't really know what credentials you have as uh, an expert in women's reproductive care. I don't think that you have any. Um, I will tell you that there are thousands of pro-life ob -GYNs out there. There are textbooks uh, out there in our school system medical books that say that life begins at the moment of conception. You see, Bill, we do know what we're talking about. Many of us are trained on this issue. Um, we are scientifically trained on this issue. You said that it's just a woman's right and it's their reproduction and we just need to leave it alone. So, I just want to ask, would that work in another circumstance? So let's say slave owners, for example. You know, it's just slave owners' rights, and if they want to own slaves or do whatever they want with their slaves, that is that is their right. It's up to them. You may say that it's different, but it's not, because just like abortion infringes on the rights of another human being, slavery infringes on the rights of another human being. You could say, well, people that raise people, you know, it's their right to rape someone. And so we're just going to let it be and just let them decide if they want to rape someone. Again, rape is someone infringing their rights on the rights of another human being, the same as abortion. 
this was, I think, the best thing that you said. You said, you know, have you ever noticed that it's a bunch of white men who are passing laws based on ignorance? Okay, well, a couple of things. One, I want to let you know that I'm a woman and there are many millions of other women who are pro-life, who believe in the sanctity of human life and who fight and work in the pro-life movement. Uh, number two, you are a white man, yet you're telling white pro-life men that their opinion doesn't matter, but you, as an older white man, your opinion does matter? Why? Because you believe in abortion? Okay, that doesn't make sense. Um, and I also want to remind you that Roe v. Wade was actually passed in 1973 by a Supreme Court of all men. So if you think that men don't have a place in this movement, particularly the pro-life movement, then I would suggest that you start petitioning against Roe v. Wade since it was decided by an all-male Supreme Court, since men really shouldn't be involved in this issue. And in fact, if men shouldn't be involved in this issue, then why did you do the video in the first place since you are actually a man? You said that we are pro-life because we have these biblical perspectives um, and, you know, we are following a book that was written thousands of years ago and, and that's why we're pro-life. So I have two words for you, Bill. Secular pro-life. There are many atheists. There are many non-believers. There are many agnostics. There are Muslims. There are people of all different types of tradition, faith traditions or non-faith traditions uh, who support the sanctity of human life. And they do so because of science. You said that every time a man and a woman have sex, they could have a baby. This is just blatantly unscientific, and I'm just going to go ahead and make the assumption that you just didn't actually know what you were talking about. Um, you see, there's a very short window of time in a woman's cycle that she can actually get pregnant. It's not every day, and it's not every time that she has sex. Um, a An egg that is released from a woman's ovary only lives a maximum of 24 hours, 12 to 24 hours. And if it's not fertilized during that window, it dies. Uh, women are not bunnies. We're not rabbits. We do not ovulate multiple times a month. We ovulate one time throughout our cycle. And it is a very short window that we can actually get pregnant. You said that our argument was based on bad science. Well, I want to tell you that I am pro-life because of science. I am pro-life because science tells me that a human being is created at the moment of conception. It tells me that unduplicated DNA will be created for that unborn child at the moment of conception. Um, you talk about how we need to be fact-based that that we need to just be objective, that we need to look at the facts. Well, I want to give you some facts about the unborn, Bill. Um, the human heartbeat of an unborn child begins at 21 days post-conception. At eight weeks, a baby is classified as a fetus, which literally in Latin means little one. At 10 weeks, a baby responds to touch, which tells us that there is some sensory development that has already begun. Also at 10 weeks, all of the unborn child's major organs have been formed and they are fully functioning. At 13 weeks, uh, a baby has developed unique fingerprint, fingerprints. Um, the information that I'm giving you is fact-based. It is based on facts. So I encourage you to maybe be objective and start looking at the facts before you run off and make some other silly video. I, I know, Bill, that many times uh, you walk into a room and uh, you may be one of the smartest people in the room, but on this subject, on the subject of fertility, on the subject of women's reproductive rights, you, sir, are way out of your league. 